Greetings and welcome to NoBSBaking.jp here. Now, in many of my videos, I know I'm trying to get the videos as short as possible, and so sometimes I can go through things a little quickly. I've got one area here that I want to readdress. It's all to do with understanding dough development. Very important part of baking. You can make it or break it here. I want to clarify a few things. Let's go. So you can see from this video here that what I've done is I've mixed this dough. I've been mixing for around 9-10 minutes uh, and you can see that the window pane just hasn't quite formed. Now I'm not going to go too much further because I don't want my dough temperature to get out of control but you can see that the window pane it's not as beautiful as, as what I'm recommending that everybody have but keep in mind this is not a no time dough it has no conditioners added to it so in that case I look for where it's starting to develop nicely and then what I do is I move on to the next steps which is give it rest time. Now, as I showed you in the first little video clip there, mixing your dough generally doesn't give you that really beautiful window pane test unless you are adding conditioners. So with a no-time dough process, you add conditioners, they have reducing agents, these reducing agents help soften or break down the gluten structure a little bit, providing a more elastic, more extensible kind of a dough. And so it's through this type of a process and the addition of conditioners that you're able to fully take a look at your window pane uh, directly after mixing. Now, grandma or great grandma never had a mechanical mixer back in the day. You know, she would mix the dough until she felt that it was well incorporated, well mixed together, and then she knew that what she had to do was let it rest. It's through these rest times that any shortfalls that you have in under mixing your product and getting your gluten and everything all formed and developed properly will be fixed up through these rest steps. So, when you, when you, in this type of a process where you have rest steps incorporated in there, it's important to check and look for window pane after the rest step. So as an example, you've uh, rested your dough, you stretch it out, you take a look at it, not quite ready yet, you punch it back again a little bit more, maybe leave it for another predetermined amount of time, uh, check it again after that rest time is complete, and you should start seeing improvement every uh, stage of um, after the rest steps that you've incorporated in there. Now on these high hydration doughs, some people mix them, some people don't really mix them too much. This is a lot of resting and folding steps. So where you check your gluten development is during these rest steps. Uh, and then you will fold it again, then maybe you'll rest it again. Uh, ultimately, before you get into your final proofing, you want to make sure that your dough is nice and extensible and delivers a beautiful window pane. So um, always check your uh, gluten development so you can optimize it during the rest steps or when the rest step is finished before you punch it back and, and or start folding it again because folding tightens it up and creates tension in your product as we know. And remember one thing about wet sticky doughs. Um, when you first kick them out of the mixer, they're so sticky, they're difficult to handle. Yes, you might be able, because they're very, very high hydration, you might be able to see some type of a window pane forming in there. But once again, give them time because the dough will become drier and a little bit easier to work with with a bit of time as that uh, water is absorbed by all the flour. And so ultimately your window pane or your gluten development check should be done after a bit of table time. So keep that in mind. Now with these no knead doughs, you can just basically splunk them into the bowl and leave them for time. You know, maybe punch them back a little bit. However, I really recommend that you do give them a few folds. I think most uh, recipes out there do recommend that you fold the dough over a little bit 
uh, and uh, in between your rest steps. This is important to knock out the CO2 gas and ultimately create a little bit of tension inside the product. And for those interested, I just included a few photos of some breads to give you an idea of the difference between a low hydration uh, bread product and a very high hydration bread product. The real trick is, as you can see, the lower the hydration, the denser the crumb. As you start moving up the scale, the crumb opens more and more providing those types of characteristics that people uh, desire in the particular product that they're trying to make. So Autolise is really about flour and water being brought together and allowed to sit for a predetermined amount of time. Now there's a lot of mixed feelings on Autolise. Some say it's great and makes big differences. Others say it makes no difference at all. From a science standpoint, if you factor in both time and temperature into the equation, it, is, it does perform a function within um, uh, in conditioning your flour. So conditioning is basically a byproduct of the enzyme activity and the bacterial activity. Now, really what Autolise does is it hydrates the flour, encouraging the enzyme activity to start. And it provides some gluten protein uh, conditioning benefits, but that is all subject to time and temperature. So keep this all in mind. I definitely would recommend a minimum of uh, an hour uh, auto lease. If you're going to put it into your fridge, expect that it's going to be quite a bit slower, but you're going to leave it in there for maybe, you know, all night or something like that. You should still receive some uh, conditioning benefits from it. But don't be expecting miracles, okay? Uh, these the conditioning benefits are slow and take time. So even at an hour, yes, you totally will notice something, but is it going to be the optimal dough conditioning that you're looking for? It may or may not be. And this is the reason why auto lacing in conjunction with rest times are your surefire bet. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please give me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out as I'm getting this channel going here. And be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have sitting right over here. Uh, we'll see you next time. No BS breaking.